Now, how many of you out there have a nocturnal deer parcel? Meaning that whether it's the majority of the deer in the area are coming on your land after dark, uh, during the darkness hours, during dark hours, or uh, the mature bucks only come on your land after dark. There's a lot of you out there, and most of the lands we go to are nocturnal parcels. And really, the daylight parcels for mature bucks especially really evolve down to areas that don't allow hunting, areas where people only come for gun season, or areas of property that regardless of how they're managed, as far as the habitat's managed, their hunting management is such that the hunting pressure is either light or non-existent. And so very few normal deer parcels are like that. People overhunt them, overhunt various aspects of the habitat, and and uh, and it results in a nocturnal heart, uh, deer parcel pretty quick, especially when it relates to mature bucks. We look at that your, your mature buck ratio from nighttime to daylight pick should be about one to one, meaning in and around night uh, daylight hours. It could be that it's getting dark at six, you're getting consistently pictures of a nice mature buck at 6.30. That means he's close. That means he's not coming from a mile away. It means he's really close, maybe even on your land uh, to get his picture that close to dark. But I'm talking about you, it's getting dark at six, it, daylight's breaking at seven in the morning, and you only have bucks that are coming on your land between 10 at night, nine at night, sometimes eight, and then uh, three, four, five in the morning. So they're more definitely nocturnal, two hours outside of daylight hours, two and a half, three hours especially. And uh, and that ratio of pictures is really telling. You should get daylight photos of mature bucks, even if they're random or close to daylight. And so that's one way to tell that you have a nocturnal parcel. Cool thing is they're there. If you're getting nocturnal deer pictures, obviously you know that there's deer in the area and mature bucks. The bad thing is, is the more nocturnal pictures you're getting and not as much during the daylight, it gets to a point where you're just not even getting, seeing your potential mature bucks in the area because a lot of bucks, the older they become, if your property is known as a nocturnal parcel in the area and they want to avoid it during the daylight, then not only do they avoid it during the daylight, but eventually they avoid it at night too. It just gets that reputation. This is not somewhere that you should be at any time and they just get used to never going on your property unless it's that random doe they're chasing during the middle of the rut and that's about it. I wanna reverse it so instead of having a random chance two or three days during the rut, that mature bucks are focusing, even if they're different mature bucks, are focusing on your land for the entire three months of the deer season. It can happen fast. When you make the appropriate changes to your land, it can happen in one season. This isn't something that you make changes here in the summer of 2022, and then those changes take place in 2023 or 24. This is for this season, you make these changes. Now first is food. What I mean by that is if you don't have quality food on your land and it's a private parcel, then you're not going to have deer or especially mature bucks focusing on your land during the daylight. Those mature bucks will travel to find the best, safest food in the area. And it's the same with public land. If you're not food focused when you're hunting on public land, then you're really missing the picture. And a lot of times those best food sources around public land are on private land. So just a little scouting tip for you there, that you're watching deer on public land, focus on exterior food sources on private land, no matter how large the chunk of public land. And then of course, clear cuts and diversity of habitat, but it all goes back to food. And if you're spooking out that food, and this is why they have a lot of uh, food plots in Michigan on, pri on public land. And you know how many people focus around those food plots to hunt, park, and, and access in all the time? They're completely overpressured. Now that means you know we're not a mature buck is going to be during the during the daylight. So that could be part of a strategy. But bottom line is if you have your own food on your property, you have a nocturnal parcel, if you're spooking out that food, if you're over hunting that food, if you're allowing your scent to blow in that food, if you're ever getting down out of a stand and those deer can see you getting in out of a stand and spooking out that food, then you're going to have a nocturnal herd. And often food is the number one problem on a property. The higher the quality of the food, the more you spook, the more you invite deer, the larger number that is, then the worse the effect of the nocturnal hunt will be on your land. Number three, bedding areas. Obviously, if you have food designated areas, then you're going to have adjacent bedding by does and fawns if you have bedding habitat, and then what's left over is for mature bucks. So what's interesting about this is if you keep the sanctity of your food plot intact, meaning deer recognize it, that you can, that it's safe there when they get there during daylight. Now maybe you shoot them with a random bullet or arrow, but they don't know you're there, that you're there. You're actually 
being a predator. If you maintain the sanctuary and that level of sanctuary on your food plot, then your bedding areas will be intact. Even if you happen to spook a random buck out of his bedding area, as long as you have that afternoon food source for every deer in the area focuses on and they feel it's safe to get there, if you don't have that, then you're not going to have that bedding area. That deer is not going to be there in the first place. I found you can take a chance at getting into a bedding area stand in the morning on the outside downwind side of a bedding area. And if you spook a buck, you'll have another one that might slot in. If you shoot one, you might find that one slots in there. But those bedding areas are critical to have. Obviously, the food is dictating where this bedding area goes. And then, of course, your access. Whether it's accessing around a food plot, around a bedding area, you're getting on and off your land, whether it's after dark, before daylight, or during the daylight hours where you expect the deer not to be. It seems like so much common sense. But we can't tell you how many times that we go to a property, whether it's Joe Youngblood in Michigan, who works with us now designing Habitat, Kevin Smith, Pennsylvania, Ohio, and Dylan too. We go to these properties and the access goes right through their deer habitat improvements. There's no way they can get on and off their land without spooking deer. Sometimes the easiest answer is just get rid of the food source. Sometimes you have to get rid of the bedding area or not make a bedding area in that location or change your access so you don't walk through that bedding area during the daylight. There's always something that can be done and you can do that right now. Bedding areas, just make sure they're not your access. It all boils back down to that access. And then finally, number five here, what that all equals is if you're doing it right, you have defined AM stands, morning stands, and defined afternoon stands. If you're avoiding food sources when they should be avoided, we walk through a lot of food sources at 11 o'clock in the morning or one o'clock in the afternoon as far as our food plots because we know the deer aren't there, they're in the bedding areas. On the flip side, we don't walk through our bedding areas at that point. Morning stands are great because you have the luxury of sitting there for four hours knowing that deer are bedded down right in front of you or they've already passed through, they're browsing through, you know where they're at. When you go in there in the afternoon, you're just going in blind. So define morning, evening stand locations, not just one in the middle on some funnel for two different winds, as going in whenever, waiting till the middle of the season. That's not smart deer hunting. That's just knowing you're going to be invasive and saying, okay, I'm gonna wait till November 6th to go hunting and then just hoping for the best, even though you're being invasive and spoken deer when you go on the, into your property. In that way, you're not building a herd. You're not keeping deer for the next year and protecting them, advancing the next age class because let's face it, a mature buck during the daylight only has about a two to 400 yard window that he moves. Even if he has a three mile home range at night during the daylight, whether it's multiple bucks at different times focus on your land or a few that focus on quite a bit or quite often, the bottom line is if you make your property feel like a sanctuary, even though you're hunting it, then good things will come. AM and PM stands, critical on your property. Nocturnal deer parcels can be turned around very fast. You can do it this season. This isn't something you don't need to wait years for. And this is what we do. You know, we recommend for clients how to do this. It's kind of like when we go to a property, you're looking at it. What can we do different that they're not doing right now to make sure that they see deer during the daylight? Because that's ultimately what determines not only your success, but our success as land managers and looking at this property. Because if we're recommending improvements that create a problem for you and make it so you can't access your land, then we're not doing a very good job. And that's more traditional deer management. We want to take it up a level for you and we want to see you enjoy a daylight parcel this year and be one of those herd influencing parcels that I talk of that represent less than 5% of all parcels out there. Enjoy it, make changes right now and good things will come this season. Folks, I want to make sure you check out my web class video series, whether it's how to design your food plot program or how to design your property in general. And we have a new one coming out that'll be how to hunt the rut. But these bucks back here are testament. Some of these bucks go back to 93. They're even in different states. I urge you to check out those web classes that you can help yourself, help your land, help your hunt. The link is in the description. And also for those that have tried them out, I encourage you to offer some feedback in the comments below. Thank you.